can helium network be hacked this question has come up several times in the past and is now raising more concerns as the network has started to grow tremendously in this video we'll have an in-depth discussion on this topic hey folks this is roy and welcome back to my channel iantech so what does hacking mean in the context of helium network i have divided that into two categories the first one is hnt related so either stealing hnt from somebody else's account or adding hnt to your account bypassing the standard mining protocols the next category is proof of coverage related remember that the proof of coverage algorithm is used to verify the location of a hotspot that it claims to be at in that case one can try to generate artificial witnesses or beacons that will help them to get more agents to do any of these three one has to hack the code behind the helium network and as of now it has not happened or at least i am not aware of any such incident so in that sense the algorithm is pretty robust and it's not prone to hacking which is a good thing the next item is location spoofing and it turns out that it is pretty easy to do but it can be used for both good and bad intentions and we will talk about both of them in this video so what is location spoofing remember that hotspots other than the original helium miners do not have gps which means they cannot verify their location on its own the users are completely responsible for setting its location so when you register a new hotspot on the helium network you are asked to update its location by pinpointing this marker now no one is stopping to move around this marker and placing it in a different place other than your where your hotspot is really located and in fact you can place it in the middle of the sea or on the top of a mountain so here is one example on the northwestern coast of uh, africa there are a bunch of hotspots in the middle of the sea where there is no land and this situation is called location spoofing or faking the location of a hotspot so the question is why would one do that so if you go to the helium explorer and check this location on the day of recording this video you'll find that uh, there are 1014 hotspots actually at this location so what is the reason so here is one of the possible explanations i believe these hotspots belong to one of the hosting companies they have a bunch of hotspots but they do not have the hosts yet so they are uh, going through their application they have not decided where the location is going to be so they do not know a priori where to set up uh, where to uh, assert locations for these hotspots however they still want to earn agents from creating poc challenges from these hotspots because they are just uh, they do not want to leave those uh, hotspots idle but to get want to get some agents earned from those hotspots but the problem is a helium miner will not earn hnt unless a location is uh, fixed or location is asserted so but they do not want to either deduce other reward scale by placing team uh, placing those at random locations so what is the best location but to earn hnt without affecting other people's reward scale in the middle of the sea right so that is what that is what they have done i believe that is why they are like thousands of spot in the middle of the sea and uh, they are ex exactly at the same location and i think this is a very good intention and i ap appreciate uh, their way of uh, addressing this problem so let us move to another case let's say you live in a rural place where you have the only one hotspot so you are the lone wolf and you are not earning much but there are a bunch of hotspots little far away from your location so in this case let's say 90 km away so you could think that okay let me um, assert my location at this point close to the other hotspots but i will leave my actually physically leave my hotspot at my home so you might think that you will not, you are not going to earn more agents by receiving the witnesses from other hotspots but this is not going to work because your hotspot is still physically present here and most likely you are not going to receive the beacon signals from other hotspots so you are not going to receive any witness and similarly your beacon signal would not be heard by other hotspots so you are not going to earn any agent by this location spoofing Um, on top of that what would happen that uh, the reward scale for other hotspots in this area will go down so these hotspots will actually earn little less hnt than they could so this is a bad idea let us now move to a more serious case consider two very closely placed hotspots like this you might already know that in this case 
you are going to get invalid witness from the other hotspot and if you check the transaction you will find that it says witness to close and a few other details so now you might think that okay uh, what will happen if i uh, assert the location outside this red zone for example here right and then you might think that okay because the location is they are now more than 300 meter apart so the witnesses should become valid but no actually this is not uh, going to work the network is smart enough and it will detect that you have performed a location spoofing or at least one of the hotspots has performed location spoofing so let's try to understand how the network detects that so uh, let's consider that this leftmost one is your hotspot and there are a bunch of other hotspots at different distances so to prove the presence of your hotspot what it does it sends a beacon signal at the radio frequency and as the radio signal is moving away, it's going to spread out, so its signal is going to become weaker. So with distance, the signal becomes weaker. And to quantify this strength of the signal, uh, a number which is calculated is called RSSI, the Received Signal Strength Indicator. So for example, um, so this is mean, uh, calculated or determined in DBM unit. You don't need to understand all these details. What is important here is the more negative this number is, the weaker the signal is. So as you see, if it's basically placed next to each other, the signal state might be minus 40 dBm at 500 meter, meter distance minus 80, 2 km minus 100, at 5 km minus 120 or so. so. These are rough numbers, they will actually vary depending on many other factors. But the main idea is that with distance, the signal strength should go down. On top of that, there's another important factor which is called, a relay, um, which is called SNR or signal to noise ratio. So again, uh, with distance, the relative noise should increase because the st signal strength has become weaker. And these numbers are actually determined by something called a free space path loss. You can check out that in Wikipedia, but I'm not going to discuss that um, in this video. Let us now consider the case that you have two hotspots next to each other. However, you assert the location for one of the hotspots two kilometers apart from the other one, while in reality, they are really next to each other. So in this case, when the first hotspot sends a beacon signal and the other hotspot receives it, it you will still get invalid witness. And if you check the details, you'll see something like this. It says witness RSSI too high. Distance 2 km, RSSI minus 42 dBm, SNR 13, uh, 13 dB. So what it means that the received signal strength by the other hotspot is not compatible with the distance uh, mentioned or distance asserted. So at 2 km, the RSSI should have been much much weaker, let's say minus 80 dBm or minus 110 dBm or so, but it cannot be so strong. So this is how the Helium network detects that um, the location must have been incorrectly placed and they must have been pretty close to each other. And in that case, you will get an invalid witness. And these numbers, that like whether it's going to be invalid or valid, uh, is computed uh, based on this free space path loss and this is the chart basically on the y-axis you have the signal strength and the, on the x-axis you have signal to noise ratio and this green zone is where the witnesses will be validated so you don't want to be in the invalid zone so now the question is is there a way to utilize this information and use location spoofing to earn some extra agent and that would be called exploiting location spoofing and it turns out that um, uh, it might be possible for example, let's say you want to be somewhere here. So basically you want to get, uh, so earlier you saw that if you have uh, two hotspots next to each other, you are getting about minus 40 dBm of RSSI. So, but you want to do something so that the, your RSSI becomes smaller. So how will you do that? You can actually put them in two boxes or have some obstacles between them so that basically the signal when it reaches to other hotspot is uh, becomes weaker. Basically you're trying to mimic this situation where um, the two hotspots are two kilometer apart but uh, in reality you are not so you are just uh, uh, you are just weakening the signal by putting more obstructions between them so in that case if you come you can if you can bring your uh, snr and rssi value in the green zone you will be getting valid witnesses even though physically they are not uh, actually placed two kilometer apart from each other so this would be called uh, this would qualify as a hacking or cheating this is, this is because you are earning some extra HNT by not providing coverage at this spot. So you, are, um, you have faked the location. Okay. Now consider that 
uh, you just uh, use the same idea for multiple hotspots. You have a lot of hotspots and you arrange them uh, nicely in a triangular shape with 800 meter uh, apart from each other. So I already discussed that in a different video that what is the optimal location for placing the helium hotspot so that your UR scale is actually one and how you can um, increase the number of weaknesses. You should check that video out and the link will appear on the top right corner. So, so this would be unfair earning, right? Because you are not really giving coverage, but by uh, using this location spoofing and some other trick, you are still earning HNT. So this is, a, this is bad for the community. So the important question is, are there real life examples of earning by location spoofing? And the answer is it could be. And I will take you through some examples. However, before that, I want to clarify a confusion many people might have. So for that, we will go to the Helium Explorer page. So explorer.helium.com slash coverage. And we will zoom into one area, let's say on Florida, around uh, Miami. So first you will notice that now there are many hexagons instead of hotspots. And if you click on one of the hexagon, uh, for example this one, and click on the hotspot, it'll, it will show its witness map. And now you can notice that the hotspot looks like it's in the middle of water where there is no land. And also above that you can see that the other hotspots look, uh, look to be, seem to be placed very symmetrically like in a straight line at the center of the hot, uh, hexagons and some of these uh, witness lines are pretty straight and going through the centers of the, all the hexagons. So is it, uh, it looks suspicious, right? So is, it, uh, some, is something location spoofing going on here? Actually no. So this is an artifact coming because of the updated Helium Explorer map. So the new Explorer is not, it's no longer showing you the exact location of the hotspots. So basically it's hiding the location for improved privacy. Okay, it's only showing you the center of the hexagon, which is kind of important information for them. So if you want to really check the location, you can check the old Helium Explorer, which you can go by typing explorer-v1.helium.com slash coverage and we'll zoom into the same location and in this area here. So you can see that this hotspot, the name was Reach Seafoam Worm. So you can see by clicking here, it's the same hotspot and it's not in the middle of the water, it's actually on the land. And if you click on hotspot details, you will see its uh, witness map. And now we can see that uh, this no longer look very suspicious. So these hotspots are kind of um, randomly placed and you have separate witness lines for all of them. And it's not like the straight line as shown here. So this is just an artifact of the new Helium Explorer map. And now I will take you through some really suspicious examples of hotspot placement. For that I will still use, I will again use the old Helium Explorer and we will go to uh, above China. And if you zoom in in this area, you will see very nicely placed hotspots here, almost in a very symmetric pattern. Or for example this one, or even this one. All of them are very nicely placed in your hotspots. Now, of course, one can place them in a really in this manner because this is kind of the ideal placement and uh, which are like roughly 800 meter apart from each other and at the center of uh, each hexes. Also, but it's not really possible to place one of them in the above water, right? So, but remember that um, the locations are only kind of accurate up to 50 to 100 meters. So, you can assume that the actual location of the hotspot is about within a radius of 100 meter from these uh, dots. However, if you actually check the activity of one of the hotspots, for example, this one, uh, we'll go to the activity tab here and check some of the beacon signals. For example, this one has 13, this one has 18, so let's check this one. And here you'll see that it is very weird, like, Usually you saw earlier how it looks like, for example, here. So it's like there are many hotspots in its vicinity and not very far. But this one looks like it has witness, there are witnesses uh, at this distance and this is like even very, very far distance. So if you look at the details here, uh, you can see it has got witness at a very large distance, like 250 kilometers, even 765 kilometers, uh, which is pretty uncommon. And what the, the, 
uh, suspicious ones are these ones which are invalid so look at this number this is this hotspot is 765 kilometer away and still got like minus 109 dbm of power and this one 2.5 kilometer away but still got minus 42 so minus 42 would, uh, look like if two hotspots are basically next to each other or within, uh, within a few meter of each other so this is really suspicious um, the rssi value cannot be minus 40 dbm 42 dbm if the distance is 2.5 kilometer uh, also as I noted that event 7 for 765 km, this is also, even though it's within the allowed range, but it's really difficult to get this kind of RSSI at for such a long distance. So this definitely raises some, um, some kind of suspicion. So similarly, again, this one, for example, like within one kilometer, a resonator of 12 dB is also very weird, even though it's within the valid witness range. So I have so this is one example and there is more example and there is a one particularly one very infamous example we'll actually check that out now uh, so if you go here so you will see uh, this set is like a very beautifully placed helium hotspots um, like in a flower shape actually this reminds me something called a fractal so it's more like a fractal snowflake structure if you just check some images at uh, more or less like looks like something like this okay anyway so let's go back here so basically this is almost like it's physically possible but it's unlikely to be uh, like the hotspots could be in reality like have this kind of placement so i have also pulled up the beacon uh, details for one of the hotspots in that area which is uh, like i'm using caramel jellyfish you can see it has got witnesses from really far hotspots again if you check the details you will see that they do not really match like with 12 kilometer distance one should not get minus 71 dbm so it's too high of a signal strength and that's why this has become uh, invalid so however and it looks like they are still earning hnt and it's likely that they have performed location spoofing uh, for these hotspots for example if you just compare them with this one which is more most likely a very legitimate hotspot uh, if you check the activity here and uh, let's see if we can find a beacon signal so it's in a really crowded place that's why there are a lot of witnesses okay this one and let's check the how the uh, rssi value looks like uh, now you can see it's like more moderate distances it has got like minus 100 dbm rssi value when four kilometer minus 97 so at 2.7 minus 97 so earlier you saw it was 2 km and the RSSI even was like minus 42 dBm which is really impossible um, so but this is more uh, legitimate or more practical RSSI and says in a relationship with respect to the distance now if you ask me whether these people are really hacking the system to earn extra each entries I cannot give you a confirmative answer because it's really difficult to detect the only way would be to physically go there and check whether those hotspots are there so it could be that there are some of the hotspots are there but uh, some of those are not as you saw from the activity they are really suspicious uh, so the next question is uh, are the developer team doing anything about it so i actually asked this question some time back in the helium discord and as you can see here i asked exactly this situation which i explained to you this gaming protocol and one of the admin replied that there are systems in place to prevent this type of gaming so i think the main problem here is that let's say you have a bunch of hotspots and all of them are fake right and there are no other real hotspots in that area so and then it becomes really difficult for them to detect whether those are fake or real but as more hotspots will become online and come into that area so real hotspots with real locations with correct locations i think it will be more easier for them to detect um, this kind of location spoofing and I think still they are trying to uh, improve their algorithm to detect this kind of uh, anti-gaming, uh, to implement this kind of anti-gaming system. However, when I asked them what exactly they are trying to do, they never replied to me. I mean, they never explained that how they are going to do it. Um, so that is a bit unknown to me. If you have any idea, you can also uh, let me know. So, should you completely lose hope and stop trusting the Helium network as it appears to be being hacked or cheated? I'd say definitely no, 
because the Helium team is working hard to implement different kind of anti-gaming protocols so that they can detect those hotspots which are trying to earn HNTs by location spoofing and not providing real coverage. Also with the implementation of more advanced algorithms and real hotspots with accurate locations, it will be much easier for them to detect those fake hotspots. Besides, the Helium team is very active and responsive on the Discord channel. If you find any hotspot with some uh, suspicious activity, you can always report to them and they will be happy to check those out. If you have any more ideas about how the network can be explo exploited or uh, cheated, uh, please let us know in the comment section so that it can be prevented. As well as if you have ideas about how to stop those, also let us know in the comment section. I hope this information would be useful for you. That's all for today. Thanks for watching guys and get cryptonized.